Right camera, left camera, look at them guns. Oh, they're great. I love the Second Amendment. Uh, but anyway, here is the program giveaway for today's episode. Maps Anabolic. We're going to give away Maps Anabolic to one of you lucky viewers right now. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Click on that little bell-looking thing so you can turn on your notifications. If you do those things and we like your comment, we will send you free access to Maps Anabolic. Isn't that awesome? Also, we are running a sale this month. Here's what we did. We took Maps Anabolic, combined it with the No BS six-pack formula, created a bundle, and priced it extremely low. Only $59.99 gets you both programs. Huge discounts, like saves you over 100 bucks. If you're interested, you want to sign up, head over to mapsoctober.com. All right, here comes the show. Hey, you guys seeing the, the study that's making the round on... Uh, too much high intensity exercise. Have you guys seen it? No. What? So a study <laughs> just, just <laughs> preposterous. A study <laughs> balderdash. A study's circulating because the scientists took people and trained the shit out of them with high intensity interval training. Hmm. Something that we advocate against. Not high intensity interval training, but rather overtraining in general. But what they found in the study, again, this is just, I wish they would just ask coaches and trainers before they spend money on studies. But anyway, right. decreased mitochondrial function or dysfunctional. So the mitochondria of these people who got overtrained, mm. functioning worse, and they were showing some glucose impairment. Glucose so, what impairment, that mean? yeah. What does the, that mean? Their bodies became less sensitized mm. to uh -huh. insulin and glucose. Okay. okay? So- Essentially, the study, the headlines are high intensity interval training is bad for your health or something like that, right? But when you look into the study, they beat the shit out of these people. And what they basically showed is if you overtrain, it's bad for your health, which is obviously a duh. Mm -hmm. But I do want to bring that up because you, what you will see in articles is, you know, hit training, hazardous for your health, question mark or something like that, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's interesting it being that all the articles previous to that were always highlighting the benefits yep. exclusively. Yeah, but most training. of those are probably funded by the people selling the, you know, method, right? Well, well first so, of all, it's how yeah, you... The, it's, the, the, the salt bikes. It's how you those. apply it. I could also do a study showing that... Well, that's what I have a question. I mean, you didn't really specify what train the shit out of means. What does that mean? Well, it, okay. I mean, this obviously had to be a uh, long I think duration. That, I think that the way people do some of these classes is training the shit 152 minutes at 95% VO2 max. Is part of the was part of the study, which is insane. Okay, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Now, now, the thing that people need to understand, because I could also do a study that says is that is that uh, that says back squats uh, will hurt your back. Yeah, and yeah I could but prove I mean, it by having people doing them wrong. Ninety five percent of your VO two max for an hour and a half is crazy. That sounds like just pure sounds cardio, like, though. Like rapid. Yes. Is it, are yeah. they not doing weights? No, it's high intensity interval training with cardio. Just cardio. Yeah. And again, what this is the thing that I think people the big message that people need to understand is that the way that exercise gets your body to improve or get stronger or get healthier is by sending a stress signal. And then what your body does is it gets the stress signal and then it it heals and recovers from it and then it tries to adapt so that next time that same stress signal no longer causes damage or stress. Mm -hmm. Now, if the stress signal is overwhelming, if it overwhelms your body's capability to heal, let alone adapt, well, now you're just stressing the body and beating it up. Yeah. And, and overtraining is it can be terrible for your health. There's studies on extreme endurance athletes that show that their lifespan is similar to like obese, you know, uh, cigarette smokers, mm. right? Yeah. Because they just push their body so hard uh, for maximum. And I doubt it took into account all the lifestyle stress factors, you know, that could have came into play there as well with relationships and work and everything on. Oh, top this was of a short. This was just a short study. They just beat the crap out of these people for a yeah. few months and then looked at the mitochondria. Well, that all fills your stress bucket, yep. you know, and that's that. That all plays a factor in, uh, you know, how your body's going to yeah. respond. Very to that. good point. Very now, good this point. is this was actually one of the issues that I had uh, with Orange Theory was now they recommend right. Um, I think it was like. It's like 12 minutes 
12 to 15 minutes in the orange zone, a uh, short period in the in the red, very short period in the red, and then some. But the way the uh, points work is the harder you go, the more points you accumulate. Yeah. And because it's a competitive class that there's TV monitors and everybody can see everybody, it would turn into this. And then, mind you, this is my class where I'm telling people not to do that. It still happens, right? Yeah. Like people can't help it when you put them up next to other people. You give them points for exerting more energy, even though your protocol says, "Oh, we want you to be at this many minutes, this this intensity, this." So that the, in theory, their idea of why they did yeah. that was, you know, smart. And if you actually followed their protocol, uh, you would be okay. But what I found from teaching hundreds of classes is you put a bunch of competitive minded people, which by the way, that type That's of a class attract attracts a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. You put a bunch of competitive people in there and you tell them, Hey, don't go harder than this for much longer, but, but then, then you the score points. them points. They get points for being in that uh -huh. and you, they can't help but compare, uh, compare themselves to other people in their class. Yeah. So what ends up happening is these, you know, these people pushing mm -hmm. at the like 90% intensity for, you know, 30 minutes or beyond inside the class, which is not ideal at all. I think the, the other takeaway that is important with this is although this study did something insane for anybody, I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's an insane amount of intensity for any fitness level that can happen to you with far less intensity depending on your current fitness level like, or depending on your current state meaning i didn't get very good sleep last correct. night i've got a bunch of stress totally. uh, at work right now i'm uh three days in a row of under consuming calories and nutrients yeah. like that's where that completely changes totally. that becomes something half the intensity becomes double the intensity for that person right it has yeah. to be appropriate for that moment in, right. in essence and I'll, I, I mean i remember learning this with uh elderly clients when i started to really get into that advanced age population I would do. I would start off with what I thought was totally appropriate, and then the report I would get would be like, "Oh my God, I couldn't walk for for three days." And I think to myself, like, "All we did were three sets of getting up and down off of the bench," so I'd have to scale it way back. But then I had to consider, like, this person's seventy five, deconditioned. They've done no resistance training for pretty much their entire life. Any stimulus is going to be sufficient to, and that's the key, right? Is also don't push your body to its limit in order to get you to you know where you want to go but rather do the minimum amount to trigger that thing into motion because anything yeah. above that just requires more resources right. of your body and then you can keep building on top of that versus you know you don't really have anywhere else to go once you hit that yes, threshold and, and that's why i think one of the best metrics that i used to tell my my clients was after your workout you should feel better than you went into than how you felt when you went into the workout and what i mean by better isn't just satisfied that you beat the crap out of yourself and whatever, but rather, do you have more energy at the end of this workout? Do you have less pain at the end of this workout? Do you feel like you could do another workout at the end of the workout? Like that's what you're looking for. What you don't want to do is leave the workout and be like, I survived. <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. I survived that beat down and now I need, I'm, I'm going to sit in my car and just, you know, die or whatever, go lay down on the couch. You should feel at the end, like, oh my, I, I went into this workout feeling a particular way. I feel revved up now at the end of it. Yeah, That's a good sign. I, I, somewhat, right? Because I think when you get that flood of cortisol too, even if it's overdoing it, there's a lot of people that are addicted to that feeling and would translate that feeling to a good feeling. So that's kind of, I, I don't even know if I like that as a way to explain sometimes to people because you would get people, I remember having these class, like I had these conversations after a class. Some people would talk to me after the Orange Theory classes and um, I would, we'd ask questions about what their training was like. And then I'd be like, Hey, you know, you need to probably back off a little bit. I'm see where you're at in the red zone all the time. And you're always pushing through the weights, like a circuit and you should actually slow down, take rest periods. And they're like, but I feel amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel so good afterwards. And I, just, I think it's, the, they're, they're not really even, you know what? That's a good point. They're not connected to what they're, what, what, that's they, right. what that means. That's right. They get this, they, you get that flood of, a, I think the, I feel good because you feel accomplished because yes. you did something really hard as we do almost in anything in life that's mm -hmm. challenging. You overcome it, you do it. So you go, you have this feeling of I did it. And then you add in the cortisol rush that they get and they're like, whoa, that, that feels like a little bit of adrenaline. And then a lot of these people mis misunderstand or misread uh, what feeling good after a workout is. And so, you know, I know we've said that a lot on the podcast, but I, I'd say that's my one problem with even that as an indicator, because I think more people than not are not that in tune with their body and know how to read those signs. Yeah, that's a good, mm -hmm. it's a very good point. It's like, if you're, if you can't even read what your, what your body signals are telling you, or you're not in your body, that's the, the phrase that I like to use. 
then asking someone to you know listen to their body is like well my body's telling me to eat donuts and then go beat the crap out of it that's what my body's telling yeah. me mm -hmm. it's like well you got to learn kind of how to read it you know before and, and that can be a very misleading read because it does again it does feel good to do any, accomplish anything hard right it, yeah. it, that that always feels good right well it's it's like equivalent to you know some of the runners that chase that runner's high you know like and they'll go like even further just to get that feeling out of it you know whereas you go to the circuit training you do get that kind of a uh like uh you know cortisol high from from that experience and you're always kind of chasing you know that. what though i'll even challenge that though i'll do this you might get away with it for a, a little while but at some point you'll start to feel the diminishing effects at sure. some point you'll start to get shitty sleep at some point you'll crash an hour after the workout's over and then you're chasing the previous, you know, way yeah, you felt before. Your joints will start feeling it. Yeah, it's and, all going to come to the head. And those cortisol junkies, this is what they look like with their workouts. They get really consistent, go insane, fall off for a little while. And they come back and do it again, fall off for a little while. Well, and you know, the problem with that is, and I think that's what they probably attribute the, the lack of the results is that, oh, I've just never stayed with it. Yeah, I <laughs> know. It's not because I probably- They don't ask why. Yeah, it's it's probably not because they didn't have a good approach. They think that, you know, man, when I was doing it, I was feeling great. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. feeling accomplished. Wasn't the button enough times. Yeah, my weight was even going down while I was doing it. It's just that, oh man, I fell off a month later with that. So it's, I don't know, it's a mm -hmm. tough one. It's a, and that's why I think, uh, I, well, obviously there's a reason why uh, a business like that is exploding. There's a reason why CrossFit still dominates quite a bit. Like, I mean, people are attracted to that feeling and they perceive it as a good feeling. I yeah. don't think they perceive it as a, I just beat my body up. I think they perceive it as I accomplished something and I've got this adrenaline rush now. That's a good thing. Well, I right? know what that feels like. I've gone, uh, I've gone hiking with Justin and I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know what, <laughs> what that feels like dude, afterwards. I just, I just motor. Yeah. You like, know, like, I was like, oh, I'm going. This dude. Well, I, it's, I think it's, I think it's important. <laughs> I survived. I think it's I important to note too, though, that there is there is some value in in uh, occasionally doing that. Of course, there. I mean, I, I, I always refer value. back to the conversation that we had with yeah. Dr. Andy Galpin when he talks about that. There is value to pushing beyond your limits and stretching your capacity like that. But uh, you, you know, not when it's your every day you show up to the class no, is no. like that, or every day. That I think you there's work a psychological out. benefit to it, right? Sure. Is that what they call it? Type two fun. In fact, the hiking with Justin's a great example. Like while I'm doing it, I know like this is a little excessive. Yeah. Afterwards, I'm like that was definitely excessive, but I'm glad I did it that one time, and I'll wait till next year to do it again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's very sparse every single yeah. time, dude. Speaking of, uh, you know just hard ass people. My grandfather, you know, my grandfather, right? Just turned 90 and he's just, awesome. he's just a horse, this guy. And he's 90. So he's got, you know, obviously 90 year old, you know, physical issues, although he's sharp as hell. Like he's lost zero cognitive ability. Oh, that's great. But he fell the other day, right? Mm. So he's, so he's at my aunt's house. So him and my grandmother are staying with my aunt and now they're pretty much they're in a situation now where they they don't really live on their own anymore. They need kind of assistance. Yeah. Uh, and my grandmother uses a walker and all that stuff. But my grandfather still he's on his own. Sometimes he uses a cane. But yet the other day, yesterday was it? No, two days ago he fell. This is the story, right? This is what he tells me. So yesterday I go visit him because he fell, and he's like, "Saluto, I had so much energy that day." He goes, "I washed the car." I did the yard work. I felt like uh, I was 70, you know, and I'm moving around, this and that. <laughs> I felt like I was 70. Yeah, that's, that's his exact word, right? He's like, I feel like, you know, and I'm dancing. I feel like a horse, you know? And then he goes, but what happened was is he goes to, my, there's some steps to get into, uh, I think, uh, the, the front of the house. And he missed one of them, fell forward on his face. Oh, and wow. now this guy, I swear to God, he's, <laughs> they don't make him like this anymore, right? He falls on his face, cuts his nose. That's it. And now it's not it's not cool, right? He had to get stitches. Didn't break his nose. Didn't knock no teeth out. Never breaks a bone. This is like the third time he's he's taken a spill. And he's a tall guy. My grandfather. Well, now he's shorter because you shrink a little bit, right, as you age. But he's six one, which is pretty tall for a Sicilian, especially his generation. So he falls, and he doesn't break anything, which is kind of cool. But anyway, he's got these stitches on his nose, and so I went to go visit him. Jessica made some some food for the family, so I brought him some food. And I'm talking to him about balance. And he's like, my balance just isn't good anymore. It's not what mm -hmm. it used to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm explaining to him, like, no, no. I said, a lot of the balance issues that you have are because you're losing strength. You have to work on getting stronger. And he's like, well, I go walking all the time. I said, I know, but we need to do more like strengthening exercises. So I showed him a couple things to do. Mm -hmm. And then I told him about, um, about Luna. I said, oh, yeah, go. I said, you know, you can have 
someone come here. You can have a physical therapist come here. You don't have to leave the house because he will not go to a clinic. There's no way in hell my grandfather will drive somewhere to go have somebody work on him. Yeah. Especially, you know, he speaks broken English. He's like, forget it. So I said, they'll come here and they'll do exercises with you at your house. Your insurance will cover it and you'll get stronger. I said, even if you just do once a week. And so I think he's going to be on board, which is good. So I'm nice. happy to see that. I was, some of that. I was actually, speaking of Luna, I was actually uh, talking to my best friend just a couple of days ago and he was like the first person I thought of when we first got introduced to Luna mm -hmm. uh, because he's he was the roommate I had when he finished his his PT stuff and he was doing he was doing physical therapy while we were living together. So I, I got to learn a lot about the ins and outs of their business. And I remember when they started to transition into home health care and then he started to move in that direction. So, of course, he was like the first person I sent Luna to. I'm like, hey, dude, check this out. Have you heard of them yet? And he's like, no, I haven't, but seems really cool. I've got a lot of questions, whatever. He hits me up just a couple of days ago and he goes, bro, guess who came into our our meeting, for our department meeting uh, to talk to us? I'm like, who? I have no idea because this is weeks later or what are months later, right? We've since we've talked about Luna together. And he's like, Luna. He's like, we've, we're now being told that if there's patients uh, that we can't service right now, the, to refer them to Luna and their doctor, and then they'll get uh, wow. have them come to you. He also was enlightening me, too, on like how – how because uh, now he understood – they actually gave a whole presentation, right, and better than I could probably present it. And so he was kind of saying like, bro, this is going to be – this is going to completely disrupt the space. Mm -hmm. He's all – There's getting, no downside. That's the crazy yeah. thing. That's, that's what they say. He says it's everybody wins in this. The insurance yeah. company wins. They save the money. The patient wins. The PT wins. Right. It's like it, he's all – The physical therapists make more make more money, do less paperwork. Insurance yeah, less saves paperwork, money. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, and then the and patients then the, get better service because they don't have to go on somewhere. On multiple levels. Right. So the patient gets better service because they have a qualified person comes up. In addition to that – what happens with insurance because it's so expensive to go to do like the in play in house type of uh, healthcare and stuff that like places like Kaiser super strict they will not like approve you have to my buddy was saying I have to he says I have to write a, like a novel to get approval for more than six sessions yeah. he goes that's kind of like the standard wow. you had surgery you get six sessions of physical therapy you then you they kick him out basically after that wow. and he goes unless there's something like they just they this person can't walk yet or they're really really bad and he goes and then even to get that i have to jump through all these hoops to do that so he's like but home health care because it's so cheap oh insurance will cut you 30 30 visits no big deal he wow. says like nothing they'll write they'll write a check for that all day long i don't see how it can't completely disrupt that's the market. what he well he, yeah the, the other the other part that i think is is huge is if you're just a fitness fanatic you're not injured you didn't tear anything but you have shoulder pain when you bench, you have a little low back pain. Oh, I can't squat anymore. Nine out of 10 times, people like that would never go to their doctor and ask for a physical therapy. Well, not only well, imagine that. if you were a trainer, you, you know, and like that was something that like, okay, it was a little outside of your scope of, of being able to help them and like being able to have that as a service to now add in, yes. you know, to get them to rehab and then bring them back into, you know, the, the gym would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Not only that, they won't approve that. No, they won't. That's part of why he's like, dude, you, he's like, right now, if I have somebody, if they do not have like an acute injury or a doctor has been like, you have to go to physical therapy, yeah. then mm -hmm. even if you think you want it or it would be extremely beneficial to you, you ain't getting That's it. That's what I was telling my aunt. Yeah. That's, That's why this is so sick. That's what I was telling my aunt. She's like, well, okay, well, we got to go to his doctor and get her. No, I said, no, no. You go to the, the site, the getluna.com. It's direct. You don't have to go through your primary care. Mm -hmm. yeah. They'll send someone to you and your insurance covers it. Also- People who are just fit and healthy. Like, I tell you what, if you have pain or dysfunction, but you're not injured, regardless of that, the best, one of the best people you can go to is a really good physical therapist. There's some of the best movement specialists you'll find anywhere in the world. In fact, that's where I learned a lot of my stuff. I had a PT work in my wellness studio for years, yeah. and I used to just eavesdrop and watch and listen, and I learned so much from yeah. that application yep. and how good she was. Oh, that's was. what was so great about having a best friend that was my best friend and roommate for so long as I got to be there through his schooling, and we would come home after, and especially early on when I was so, you know, me remember being a trainer early on, you were so excited about yeah, your yeah. job. We'd talk about patients and clients and stuff like that. He gave me so many resources, so before I even got my corrective that's exercise right. specialist, I had a PT living at home with me, and I'd come back, he's a Bro, I got this client. And this is going on with their hip. What with that? I'm like, oh, do this, do that. Look for this. And I'm like, oh shit, I didn't even think like that. You That's know? great. So, hey, so the other day, uh, I was on. I got interviewed by uh, Jason Kalipa. 
So Jason Kalipa has me on it. Now it hasn't aired yet. Um, mm-hmm. love, by the way, I love the guy. Just want to give him a shout out. Um, really, really one of the one of the better people. I yeah, think he's in, a great guy in the fitness space. Yeah, just just a great attitude. Really, really nice guy. But anyway, he was asking me about Mind Pump and Mind Pump's like ultimate kind of goals. And I remember when we first started the podcast. One of the the main goal was, and we said this a million times, to ch- kind of change the the direction of the fitness industry a little bit, kind of change the conversation. And get people to, you know, communicate fitness the right way type of deal. Now, another thing has really started to pop up, especially since we started working with NCI, which is to be an example. And I thought this was really, I thought this was really cool because he he agreed with this. To be the example for other fitness influencers and trainers and coaches to show them that you can talk about fitness the right way with integrity, communicate the right stuff, and still be financially successful because I think one of the main motivations behind why new trainers and coaches say and sell stuff the wrong way is because they see the successful people in our space who do, who make money and they all do it the wrong way. So they think, okay, the, the formula is sell bullshit supplements, sell, you know, baloney, you know, weight loss, uh, you know, challenges, tell yeah. people that they're going to, you know, hammer them yeah. for 30 days. High volume, super intensive programming for this totally generalized. Yeah. And if you're a trainer and you're trying to build your business, you're, you know, and you think you're looking at these people like that person's successful, that must be the best way to sell and be the be- best message. And so I said, what we're trying to show people is no, you could sell, you could tell someone it takes a year to lose 30 pounds and it's going to take a lot of big changes in your life and still be successful. Yeah. And he loved uh, that I said It's just that. a slower process. It, it takes longer, which is it's ironic because you're trying to tell coaches that and they know that that's the way they're supposed to train their clients too mm-hmm. the, for the best. So, yeah, no, it's 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 funny that that's how we think. Yeah. You know? And along those lines, right? So we got into more of the business of Mind Pump and we don't share this too much on the podcast, but I did tell him that we also do side investments. And he asked me what the main goal of the side investments were. And I was very honest. And I said, obviously, you know, when you invest on the side, you're trying to grow your wealth. And that's obvious. I said, but really for us, it's we don't want to be put in a corner to where we have to at some point compromise our integrity in or, or lose, you know, our livelihood. Like, okay. And that happens to a lot of people mm-hmm. where they're well, in we a position. T- remember, we were talking off air. Imagine how, and I don't know what I would do, right? So imagine I still worked at 24 Hour Fitness and, you know, making good money there. Yeah. I have a mortgage, a family. Um, I'm the main breadwinner of the, of the family. And all of a sudden, 24 Hour Fitness mandates vaccines for me to go out and I have to do it. Mm-hmm. Yet I feel, oh, I don't need to do it. I've already had it. I already feel like I have antibodies, but then they tell me I have to. I'd be put in this predicament on like, it doesn't matter what I believe or not. I would probably. Well, well that's what's happening right now, right? Wide scale. But even if you go to something less controversial, which probably happens all the time in gyms, let's say you work in a gym, you're a trainer. And the gym that you work under sells some bullshit supplement. I don't know. Branch chain amino acids. All right. Uh, we, you're, here's your quota. You need to sell $500 worth of branch chain amino acid supplements every single month. And you know that it's a complete waste of money if people are eating adequate protein. But your boss is saying, I don't care. You need to sell this bullshit supplement. You know, a lot of, you know how many trainers get put in this position yeah. where they have to sell crappy workout programs or they have to sell some supplement they don't believe in? And I... I, I, I'm for us. I'm very proud of the fact that we don't have to do anything. They could they could shut us down if they want. We're going to be okay, right. and that's really the main reason that we do these side investments is so that we could always do what we want. And if somebody ever tells us, "Sorry, you got to say it this way," we could tell them to fuck off. Well, it's, it's also good. why I tell other uh, entrepreneurs in, in our space too how important it is that you. Um, acquire uh, real estate on all these platforms. By real estate, I don't mean actual houses. I mean like like real estate as far as a uh, footprint in Twitter, on Instagram, yeah, on Facebook, no. on YouTube, on email lists. Like you really should diversify your portfolio. And really it's about what, could, especially in the climate we're in right now, because 
You have no idea if all of a sudden, I mean, how many people do you think, I mean, we estimated it, right? Or someone pulled up the, someone pulled up the stats on this. I mean, how many people lost millions of dollars when Just Facebook, Facebook yeah, down, you, yeah, I mean, you have this platform and it's funny because people, they, they, cause you don't own it. No, Facebook you think is you do though. Company. You're like, Oh, I have this business. It's so successful. Do you though? Really? No. I mean, if, if 80% of your revenue is coming from this one single platform that you don't own and control, do you really own Dude. your business or do you technically kind of work for them? Dude, when Lane, okay. So Lane Norton, right? Good friend of ours, uh, one of the better voices in the fitness space, although sometimes a bit angry. He, he, at some point a while ago, people had been, cause you know, he's, he, he gets aggressive. He gets aggressive with how he tax bullshit. And I know sometimes that brings him negative attention. And I guess a group of people got together and would, and complained Instagram. Cause you could do, re you could report on Instagram that someone's, I don't know, whatever offensive or whatever. And a bunch of people did this and almost got his Instagram shut down. And he had to go fight it and everything. But I remember talking to him and he goes, bro, he goes, my Instagram accounts for such a large percentage of my revenue that that would devastate me if I got shut down oh, even yeah. for a week yeah. because of all the stuff. And so that that's exactly to your point. You're yeah. like, you don't want to be in a position where you're screwed. You don't want all of your eggs in that one basket. Totally. Dude, tell me you guys watch the Dave Chappelle. Oh, oh speaking of which- <laughs> My that goodness. you just made me think about it because of the conversation that he. You had. know, you know how hard they're trying Ugh, to get he, him blacklisted. That, was, that well, was the hardest I've seen him go. So I special. started seeing like uh, at an, I didn't even know he had a new special, mm -hmm. and I started seeing stuff all over uh, social media again of like cancel Dave Chappelle. And I'm like cancel Dave Chappelle. What? Well, because he was in a three um, three special contract with Netflix, and so this sort of oh, honored that that last. I one. didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And, but he, did you? When he opens it, right? What does he say? Hey, I'm not going to be doing this for a long time. Time, yep, and I'm gonna go hard, and he did go hard. He lived up to what, <laughs> what he uh, was cautioning. You know what I love about him too? It, it, by the way, he puts his money where his mouth is. He doesn't give a fuck. If you want to cancel him, go ahead. I mean, he canceled himself. Oh, yeah. You know how much money he left one, on the one table? Of the purest comedians still left. Do you guys remember when he left the Chappelle yeah, yeah, show? Like Fifty million or something. He left on the table. Yeah, yeah. To cut it out because yeah. he didn't like the way things were going. No, he yeah. he's gone from good to great to brilliant. Yeah. That's literally how I feel his trajectory of his career has been. Because I've always been a fan of Dave Chappelle. He wasn't my favorite comedian, though, 10, 15 years ago. But his last, like, three to four, I mean, each one of them, he's continued to bring a, a whole nother level of brilliance to his art. I That's mean, he's good... always been amazing and an artist. Yeah. But shit, dude, his his delivery, what, he, what I noticed, and I've noticed this on the last two or three more than any of his other material before, he takes you on this intelligent ride where you don't know. Yep. If he's about to crack a joke on your beliefs or side with you, you you, yeah. you, you don't know. And so you have this kind of weird angst, like, oh, I want to laugh, but is right. he shitting on me right now or not? And it, it, but it makes you think. So no matter what side of the fence you're on with that uh -huh. topic he's discussing, he does it in such a a, a, a tactful it's way. Very calculated. Oh, it's it's so brilliant yeah. that I mean I I would think that he has a pretty good uh, left right you know, audience that listens. I, I, I think he does such well, a good job. But I, he, I mean, he's definitely, de he definitely ruffled it, uh, some serious feathers because like of just, you know, some of the wild, wild uh, content in there that, uh, you know, uh, some people will have that knee jerk reaction like, oh, like, but he shits on everybody. You know, the, the thing is, is like nobody, uh, you know, any class of people, anything like is up for grabs. Yep. So it's just like that's that's just pure comedy when, um, you know, nobody is up on this little pedestal like everybody has gets their shot. Yeah, but I don't I don't even feel like he um, like he t so much that he's like takes jabs at like everybody he like. He goes after very sensitive topics that everybody seems to be scared to talk well, about like the or there's gaslighting on one yeah. side or the right. other. And he tells a really good story and he makes it compelling. He makes it funny as shit. And he really makes you think about your own right. views on that topic. Well, what, what, you, you nailed it on the head by saying brilliant because I, I love comedy for obviously because it's funny, but I also like watching comedians who are so smart that they can talk about third rail topics that I mean real third rail topics right but do in a way to where you're like wow that was uh, that was funny and interesting and oh my goodness you know he does that better than anybody like anyway. Bill Bill Burr is hilarious I love Bill Burr yeah and he hammers people too 
But Dave Chappelle goes so hard and says shit that you're never supposed to. Dave, and Dave then makes you think. For it. Bill and Bill Burr's one of my favorite too. Bill is uh, shock and awe, funny. Oh shit, he just said that yeah. like that. Where Dave, you, he go, he gets you, he catches you going, oh fuck, I never. I never thought of it like that. Well, you're laughing and you're also thinking like that. Throws you a like completely that. different perspective oh, you didn't so see coming. So good. Yeah. I mean, his his uh, he's got to be one of the greatest. His of all time. his his point of view with the the, the transgender community and then uh, the the like white and black separation thing and how that has divided itself. Yeah. I just I had never thought of it from that perspective before. And whoa, was that interesting? Well, what he did to me. brilliantly oh, yeah. is he took two sides that you're you you're not supposed to you're not to, supposed to yeah. you're not supposed to question and you're not supposed to be against right. That's that's the politically correct uh, I guess uh, you know position. And then pits them against each other, and now you're left with, uh, what do I do? Like, what do I say? <laughs> yeah. What am I supposed to? Right. Which is really, really smart. Now, the the funny thing to me is that people are trying to cancel him. First of all, good luck. Yeah. Second of all, comedians are supposed to be untouchable. Like, you're, they're supposed to be untouchable unless they suck. If they suck, nobody buys pays you know pays for tickets or whatever. That's fine. But they're supposed to be that way. In fact, that's that's like historically for thousands of years, if the king was executing his gestures, mm -hmm. that's when you knew the shit was about to hit the fan because it was only the gesture. That was the whole goal. The gesture's goal, like the whole point of one was to say things that nobody else could say and poke fun at the king and poke fun at the, well, at the court. And, and say what a lot of people are is probably like, they're dealing with that in their own minds. Right, trying yeah. to make light of that yeah, shit, right? Yeah, like, you know, conversations maybe behind closed doors or whatever. It's like, you know, I, I know, like, this thought is out there, and let's let's see what that looks like and see how to kind of present it in a way where it just makes you think about, like, multiple perspectives, yeah. not just one that, like, you know, predominantly, you know, has the power position right now. Yeah, now name name a person that you would, you would rather smoke a joint with uh, over Oh, Dave God. Chappelle, I, I can't. not many, dude. I yeah, think he's that would be the ultimate. Now. He's dude. up there now. I'm telling you, he literally he he catapulted into brilliance, yeah. dude. Uh, he went I, from good to great to absolutely brilliant. I would love, and you know, it's, by the way, have you ever seen him on shows where he's not performing, but he's just kind of like there was one with uh, David Letterman. He had a great conversation. Yeah, with David and then Letterman, there was if you didn't see that. There was oh, one yeah. with Seinfeld where yep. they're kind of hanging out, mm -hmm. and you can tell he's a deep thinking, different kind of person. Like when he's on stage, he's way more charismatic, way more. Off stage, he's got this kind of interesting. See, and I kind of feel like that's the big change that I've seen in his career is that uh, I, I guess he 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 used to be like more dramatic and more oh goofy. Uh, where where I feel like he's like he's talking to you now, yeah. And he, the, you can you can feel the confidence. Well, he knows and it's, it, it's got so much weight and it's yeah, important. Yeah, yeah, dude. You know, you know like, who was, he's an important he, voice. You know who was like that? What's that one comedian, Carlin? Oh yeah, George yeah, Carlin. Yeah, yeah. George yeah, he was Carlin. like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Where, where he, where, you reach that pinnacle of comedy where you could do that. Like at first you're just funny, and then you get so good because he's been doing this for how many how many years now? Decades, right? right? Yeah. That you get to that. Like that wasn't level. a. That's the, what's so sick too about Chappelle. I know we're sitting here pumping his tires like crazy. Like like he literally that was a, uh, a a completely brand new set. Like a lot of comedians, right? You listen. Like I've listened to Bill Burr enough times that like there's like recycled jokes sure. that always kind of make it into another show. It's like rare now if you've heard someone enough of someone's material that you hear a whole set that is like nothing like another one. And and what ends up happening a lot of times is that's kind of the when comedians start to go down is they they have they hit a couple like home run jokes. They know they're smart. They keep that in there all the time. They go completely away from that and they just ain't got it anymore where his set was nothing you had heard before. It was literally all about the last year almost of his life and him just kind of communicating that and then finding comedy in these very serious God just I mean, there's not a lot of times I watch a, a stand up like that and I want to turn right back around Correct. and watch it again. Like, I, wanna, I, I, wanna watch I, I mean, again. I want to watch it with you guys even after yeah. I've already Absolutely. seen it. Now, it speaking good? of goats, right? Uh, Tesla. Do you guys hear about Elon Musk, the big move? Yeah, Austin officially now. Moving from California oh, to Austin. Oh, man. Now, this is shocking to me because, like, why would you move from the highest taxed, most regulated, <laughs> oh, like worst are you business being, state? Yeah, obviously, in the the country. mandated vaccines on all your employees yeah. and everything else. I, shut down his factory and all that stuff. Like, and yeah, why like, leave? People are why so would you want to leave? Dude, people are so funny. Like, it's an e ego play. Well, it's a smart business play. Let's be quite honest. Like, this. <clears throat> The state is so terrible with that kind of stuff. 
and now he's moving his business over there, and they're moving all their jobs. Do you have over Do you there. have any idea on the estimation on what California loses in tax and then also employees when he does that? No, do you, I don't know. That's any, a good, any, that's any a good idea. Question. That's a good question. Yeah, I wonder. It would be interesting to see like the the top twenty companies per se that actually contribute to uh, California's tax. Well, didn't we lose a seat? of representation uh, that was being of the talked population. about i don't, know if, I don't know if we have yet not yet but we might okay yeah california's bleeding it's bleeding uh, residents to uh, first time ever a lot of other states so and it's not that's not good you know why it's not but good But the majority didn't want it to change i know because you know, thank you yeah. everybody it, you know why it's not a good thing because for all intents and purposes if this just if you look at the state of california you can't find a more perfect physical location in place to live than California. I'll, I'll compare California to any state in the country. There, It's not too hot, not too cold. We got mountains and snow. We got the ocean. We have incredible- have desert. We have the desert. We have incredible uh, you know, hiking and biking. And it's just, it's an incredible place to live. It's not an island like Hawaii, so you're not trapped. You could go to different places. It's, it's a gorgeous, incredibly beautiful state. I mean, here in the Bay Area, the weather is so mild- yeah. That you know that you know how, a lot of people don't know this. Now most houses now in San Jose have air conditioning, but when, but for a long time they didn't because yeah. Although it does get hot, it's, one one week out of the year, you that's it. Yeah, it it's cools down at night. Bad. It's like incredible, right? Did and you, here I can drive to the I could drive to the beach or the mountains within a right. few hours. I can see snow and ocean. Right? Did you guys see the new? Uh, it just actually just came out. So funny talking about California. The new uh, medium house price in uh, California. No, is it, is ten million dollars. No, no, yeah. <laughs> all of kidding. California. You got to include the valley, which of is worse. But course. with even the the poor, and by the way, that because you, you get the fact. Well, what that, did right? it start we at? Have, we have the greatest discrepancy, right? Like, oh yeah. It, so I mean, it's two different states. We have the yeah the wealthiest, but then we have some of the poorest areas in in our in our state. So of course, those poorest areas are going to bring down the average of the super. So the average statewide is eight hundred k. Wow! 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 Now yeah. that well, hold on, you said median or average? Which one? Because it's different. Uh, I think the article. Cool, I should look it up. Was uh, median? Yeah, so it's probably median. So median is just the middle number. Average is you add them all up and then divide by you know the total. So they can be two different. But eight hundred thousand is yeah. the median. Yeah, isn't that wild? That, that is, is <laughs> that's ridiculous. Pretty crazy. Yeah. And I think that I want to say the rest of the country is like two forty. It's between two forty and six, maybe Doug can look that up. Now here's me. the crazy thing. I've lived here my yeah. whole life. Okay. My entire life, this was the conversation that people would have. My my entire life, people would be like, "There's no way it could keep going up." Yeah, yeah. No, it's a, <laughs> the house prices aren't going to go up. Are you serious? That's it's going to be unaffordable. Guess what they Watch keep doing? Watch me try. They keep going up, dude. Yeah, it's it's crazy, and yeah. it hasn't slowed down at all. No, you know. Now speaking of California, obviously the tech uh, is still, I guess, one of the tech capitals of the world. Did you guys see, I think it was Google executives, uh, what they were saying about AI? No. Did you guys see this whole- I mean, know. I've been following uh, AI advancement uh, quite quite a lot, but I had did not see. This is a recent article. Yeah. So, okay. So, a guy, Mo Gautat, G-A-W-D-A-T is his name, formerly the chief business officer for Google's Moonshot organization, which was called Google X at the time, issued a warning in the Times- in it, he says that he believes that artificial intelligence uh, is basically <laughs> is basically going to is like the Terminator, and it's inevitable. He's saying that what we're building <laughs> this is coming from an executive at Google. Yes, he's and he's awesome. He's basically he was part of one of the people that was working on this, and I, and he said this is his quote. And I suddenly realized this is really scary. I have scary. created Skynet, and it and it completely froze me. He goes, the reality is we're creating God, and he's giving I, this warning. Come on, who? Uh, right here. Okay. Yeah, you, bro. Give, give me some credit. Yeah. Right, hey, right. when we're all when we're all about to get destroyed. You yeah. were right, Justin. I told you guys uh, we the, were creating the Antichrist. Antichrist and was the computer. Yes, dude. Artificial this is, intelligence. This is, by the way, it's not creating God. You're creating Satan. That's what you're you creating uh, with the, yeah with AI. Yeah. You know, yeah I don't know. I don't know if I, I subscribe to that. Like, I don't know. I don't think that. Uh, I mean. I definitely think we have to do a lot of other things first before we get to something that actually would be able to be smarter than us and actually kill all of us off, or that would even have that desire to do that. Like, there's so many more levels. That's to this. the big, and I feel like that's the big question: Would it want to? Yeah, it wouldn't mm, want to. Maybe. You know, here's the okay. So here's the the gist of 
what do they call the singularity? I don't know. Look at all how the all the algorithms are pitting everybody against each other. Yeah, you know, like we it, may kill ourselves first. That's what I mean. Or or that's the most to well, me that is the but we will implode. That's first. all part of this whole like software, you know, technology, artificial intelligence. Everything is like moving in that direction even further. Well, so. here here's here's another angle. Let's say scientists are like, okay, we're getting close to the singularity, which essentially this is the gist of it technology that becomes smart enough to create technology better than itself at that point it's going to accelerate so fast we can't even we, I thought even we already had that i thought a computer can actually make already a, a, a super it can't invent uh, things smarter than itself once it. that happens forget about it like like all all bets are off we don't know what the hell's going to happen right but here's here's another angle people are saying well what if scientists just made sure to program these ai machines to always protect and take care of humans okay now you got this AI that's super intelligent, that's rapidly evolving faster than we can even keep track yeah, and of. And they decide what's protecting and you. And they decide that the biggest- <laughs> yeah, that I'm would not protect be good. You. That would not be a good yeah. program. I'm going to put you there. to sleep. Right. What if it looks at us and says, the biggest threat to humans is humans. Yeah. And then it's like, everybody in your bubble, that's locked in, in your yeah, home. In a few sci-fi We're going to feed you. Already. Don't worry. We'll give you everything you need. We'll plug you into the matrix so you'll be happy. Or Here's it's all food. The, the average person's overeating by X amount. We're going to restrict food this, from the- This, <laughs> okay? The, the matrix, dude. I guarantee you, because they'll, they'll keep us around, but safe in a nice bubble where we're just, you know, not breathing real toxic air, you know, <laughs> and we're all just like living in this simulation. Yeah. Or, and you know what? You wouldn't even know, dude, because it would plug you in and you'd forget everything that happened and you'd just be right now. Yeah. It could have happened already. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, speaking, pinch myself. Yeah. speaking of conspiracies, Justin sends the most disturbing fucking video of all time. <laughs> what the hell was that? Oh, dude? I saw that. The Why? You guys didn't see this? Okay. So there was like a video that's been starting to circulate. Uh, I don't know where it came from. It looks like it might have come from like Mexico or something, but they're, they were like um, <laughs> showing this, so this, yeah. this human pig looking. That's what it was, creature, right? Creature, which again, so we've heard about the, the, human pig embryos that they've been experimenting with, you know, in other labs, you know, elsewhere, um, China probably. But um, <laughs> it, it, like, this was actually a little pig that had like the most disturbing looking face and it had like a little tongue out and it was just, like, it looked like an old man's face and, and this tongue kind of hanging out and was like, eh, eh. and they're like showing it off. Yeah. So yeah, this is one of those things where I think like we have this like weird animal deformity and then it just, yeah, it's it, like a mutant pig, but yeah. it kind of looks like a yeah, person. Cause it has a like, little bit of a look like a person and that this is how this stuff goes viral. Like look what we're doing in labs right now. And then everybody starts freaking out. That's you, my, that's it, my theory. It's on like that. that one picture. Did you ever, see um and they think that it's just like a hairless um raccoon that, that was near new jersey they thought I think. it was a chupacabra they thought it was yeah they thought it was like some lab created uh monster you know <laughs> but it just it turns out like it looks really freaky when you have it had, a it raccoon had with, with just right? in its skin you know yeah, yeah. Where, where it loses all of its hair yeah and it looked like it had a beak and everything and it was like really creepy looking but it was uh, yeah now, you nothing. know why it's always pigs, right? Why they're always talking about like working with pigs and humans? No, why? Because the, uh, from what I've read, pig organs, or in particular pig heart, is very similar yep. to human heart. So theoretically, you could grow human hearts in pigs mm -hmm. and then take them out and use them for humans. You know, So we could grow right. a bunch of human pigs, and then when we need the parts- It's the just, closest genetically, right? That we could, we could start messing with- You have to be so organs. torn between like, wow, how amazing that potentially could be, right? Could potentially save lives, but then where are we going with this, right? Like yeah, that. What happens when the pigs escape? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just, hey, <laughs> hey, I just picture the pigs are smart enough to like say, to talk. Like, uh, save me. Yeah. Save I don't want to be bacon. I'm, hey, listen, I'm sorry, dude. We, yeah. we need your heart right now. <laughs> yeah. We gotta kill you. Sorry. Please don't. Oh my God, that's a nightmare. Hey, that's terrifying, uh, yeah. dude. Yeah, they're all just right. squealing all night. All right, I gotta change, I gotta change subjects. <laughs> hey, dude, I swear to God, bro, you send that. And you know what the worst part about this, by the way? I gotta tell the audience this. It's the first fucking thing I see this morning. <laughs> when did you send that? Late last night? Yeah, late last night. That's yeah. when I saw it, dude. Yeah. I had to sleep after that. Ruined. Ruined my morning. I woke up. It's the first yeah, thing it was I see. awful, dude. It's this little pig human baby. <laughs> Why? Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna go yeah, a different direction. <laughs> so um I've been reading about the potential application. Now, this is there's no studies to support this, all right, but there's just some I've been reading about and I've been speculating myself. The potential application of blue light blocking glasses to help with anxiety. Because anxiety can be triggered or 
amplified through physical feelings, right? So you can take caffeine mm -hmm. if you're anxious and feel more anxious because you get those physical physical effects. Blue light, especially a lot of it, can be very stimulatory to the body. Yeah. So wearing daytime blue light blocking glasses, which don't completely block blue light because that would make you tired and want to go to sleep, but block enough to protect your eyes and, and cause less damage, also could theoretically cause a more calm, focused state rather than too much anxiety. I, I don't think that's a far reach at all mm. no i think it makes i think it makes total sense i'm right now there's yeah. not uh, uh there's not uh, you know i oh, try are those, blue, are those felix yeah felix race uh -huh. what do you know what frame that is uh i think not the nash but uh um, it says it on the inside of the frame yeah let me see i think it's jameson <laughs> i think jameson of course you get the whiskey one there was a yeah. there's a new frame <laughs> that katrina just ordered jameson. that so i i always got the nash which was like the smaller frame yeah um but i think they have a, a new one i think it's carver is uh even smaller than that like so if you have like a, a narrow face or a beak face like Sal. I, I was waiting. I need big ass glasses. <laughs> yeah, you need. <laughs> waiting. <laughs> the, the, the just car, little the beady, beady eyes. Ever since, oh my god! You know, ever <laughs> since Justin said that, I just. <laughs> what are you guys doing, bro? Bro, you come at my huge fat face. I need like big old like grandma glasses. Yeah. No, you yeah. have a yeah, fat yeah, face. Yeah. No, I like, like, like it goes head. out. Justin needs like ski goggles. For yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he called Felix Grady. Do you guys carry these yeah, ski, ski goggles by chance? Blue, They're like ski goggles. Blue blocking ski goggles. Yeah. Extra I'll wear those all day. <laughs> yeah. You guys are fucking. 100%. Up. I swear to God. Uh, dude. All right. Hey, what, Justin, what was that article you were going to talk about with the robot at home thing? Because, oh, oh, yeah, dude. Here okay. we go. Here, I just wanted to put this out there. Oh, just wanted to like throw, like, hey, volleyball I got it your, back I up. got your DM the other yeah, day. I, I, I messaged him ahead of time, so it's not like I'm totally he rolling. He keeps double downing on this. I, yeah, I am. I'm already fully, I'm all in. You so, have to be. Okay, yeah. so we'll put this, we'll, we'll put this so you guys can see, like, there is a legit robot already. Already the restaurant cleaning, one, right? yeah, cleaning bathrooms, it, and it like has uh, a way that it like sprays the floors, it like vacuums, you know, it afterwards, it, it like hoses everything down, it, it cleans. Super cool. Not impressed with it towards the argument. Can't take okay, your but like, forks and put in the dishwasher. How many right. steps does it take to go from the industrial version of that to the retail? Well, I mean, again, we we already we already have we can already take a rocket from here to the moon, and we already have enough seats that people can be on it. So that's right. like the same argument, right? It it's is. like what I'm just the technology that, is there to get it done, but it's like the practicality of actually having normal people go to the moon or having an actual robot wait a minute. in are your you, house. Are you really, I mean, that's, hold on. Are okay, you really right. saying it's more practical to fly humans on a private rocket to the moon for a trip <laughs> than it is to have a and, small and remember, robot? Remember, you said regular people, right? You hey, didn't stop say trying to diminish this this robot that has to actually do your dishes and put them in a dishwasher because you you guys are making leaps with that shit, dude. No, hold on, hold on, fine. Yeah. A robot that takes your dishes, puts them in the dishwasher, washes them, and puts them away. Yeah. That's less practical than flying a bunch of private citizens, giving them trips. To the I moon. don't know yet. That's what we're trying to bet on and prove. I, be, I believe it will be more practical for us to be able to go to the moon and do that than the we're reality of We're not going to be able to go your, to Australia or, or, what's, anytime what's the, soon. What I the, give you so many outs. Yeah. What's, what is the, jet, what's the Jetsons? Because uh, that's what I want from you guys. And until we get her, we're not doing what's no, the, uh, what's, it, what's, the Jetsons, Jetsons what's the Jetsons made? What's her name? Oh, I forget her oh, name. Doug, God. come on. This yeah, is your generation yeah, yeah. right now. You Don't act like you didn't beat off to her at such once a or thing. twice. With the robot. <laughs> Every show had a robot. I've seen, I've seen his his uh, his search. Was engine. it a Betsy? No. Was it Betsy? Betty? No. No. Oh, no. 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 What is like I that. will get it. What yeah, it, yeah, what yeah, it yeah, Just yeah, put yeah. robot from the Jetsons. What a great show that was. Oh, that was good. Mrs. Something. Rosie the robot. Rosie. No. Rosie. No. Is it Rosie? No, was it Rosie? Rosie the robot. Rosie. I don't know. Different. It is you know, Rosie. You know that over there? Oh. Oh, I was going to say, you, you, what did you, I asked you something the other day and you didn't know what it was, the line that I was talking about from a movie. I'm like, how's this guy not seen that line? Andrew's young, Oh, dude. the Back to the Future line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you not know that? Andrew's young. It is Rosie, huh? Yes. Rosie. Okay. All right. So okay, hold on a second. So you want so one like, like this. You're the one that keeps changing Come things. Come on, man. You're saying now the robot has to wear an apron no, and walk around? that's not what I mean. Okay. That's not what I mean. But it, I'm, I'm saying actually, like what just, Justin just sent some mechanical robot, and that technology's been around. I was doing that shit when what, I was in high school. What do you want, we an organic doing, robot? They're all mechanical. Well, no, I mean, no, 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 no. I mean, the, but the, it had multiple functions the like specifically for what you were asking it, it to do. It was cool. No, it's not. It's like literally, <laughs> it's blasting. It's. I would only, nobody would let Think about how their, clean your house would be nobody, with that robot. Yeah, nobody would let that shit in their house, dude. This <laughs> thing is like literally blasting. A, a, it would do a way a better job. This and then just <laughs> spraying the chemicals all over the wall. All right, I'll, the, give, I'll give it to you. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll, no, no, I'll, I'll give it. I'll give this to you right, right now. now. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go harder on this bet. 
I'll keep that original bet because <laughs> I'm going to win that for sure. Now it's not fair because uh, now you're, going, you're getting ridiculous. Like, are you guys going to have another side this bet can, to this? It's another side bet. Okay. We're going to have fuck robots before we fly wow. regular people to the moon wow. back and forth. Well, now that, I actually think that comes before the <laughs> duty <laughs> dishes. Uh, oh, yeah, no. bro. Porn is always ahead of us. And they had a brothel already with... Uh, yeah, dude. With I, I wouldn't things. take that bet. I, I, I foresee... Like a full-on fuck robot? Yeah, we're not that far from that. Have you not been? When's the last time you been on Pornhub? <laughs> what? What do they have? That I mean, fuck they're robots more like, on there? Yeah, dude. They're more they like, do? like yes. living dolls or whatever. Yeah, I mean, they're like yeah robots. dolls with facial oh. expressions oh, and vaginas that are supposed to feel like real vaginas. That's like, so oh, creepy. All dude. of that. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't take that bet. They just lay there like. Yeah, I, 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 I see that happening before the the dishes and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm thinking of the complexity. Yo, all the money and innovation is going to the fuck doll. That's well, no, the, the, I, the way I look at it is like Do we I already have, have a lot of AI in, in in our lives already. Okay, so it's I'm not looking for a you know what are the fucking Amazon things that you say talk Alexa. to? Yeah, Alexa. I'm not looking for an Alexa thing that or a robot that yeah, just rudimentary blasts, technology. Spray. I'm looking for something <laughs> that will have the, the dexterity to be able to grab a fork, wash it like you do, and put it in a dish. That's going to be, a, and then then grab a plate and then a pot and different things. That's going to be a lot harder than you think okay, it is. so like a Boston yeah. Dynamics robot, right? The ones that have like the dexterity, yes. they can jump, they can backflip, they can do it. Like, and that's dude, what it's going to take. There. It's it is just there. Like, just uh, like there's a rocket that goes to the moon it's there yeah okay so which one is going to happen first your average person cruising to the moon or us having these robots like you guys are talking about in your house God, I, you know I, one thing i love I want a rosy about, robot i love about the show it's recorded so this yeah. is all it's, it's all documented adam I, yeah i mean you guys can keep trying to change my mind but until one of those it's, happens i'm already i'm already all that, in dude bro when I'm this all in. i can't push any more of my chips in on this no bet. you can't yeah. but when it happens i swear to god i'm gonna come to work in a t-shirt oh we don't That's doubt like we don't doubt you will we don't doubt you will doug's got a running tally it's that you keep for him all the time I love make you sure guys. you let adam know that was right again on that one right there i love you guys so much <laughs> oh man anyway hey real quick i hope you're enjoying the show i'd like to talk about one of our sponsors mass zymes now they make digestive enzymes that helps you break down and utilize the macronutrients that you feed your body proteins fats and carbohydrates now if you find that after meals you get a little bloated or you have digestive issues, especially those of you eating a high-protein diet, digestive enzymes can make a tremendous difference. And Masszymes were designed specifically for fitness-minded individuals. This is for people who want to build muscle and burn body fat. And of course, we have a discount for you because we love our audience. So if you're interested, head over to masszymes.com forward slash mind pump. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code MINDPUMP10, that's MINDPUMP10, for 10% off your order. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from Take K. Why are Ironman athletes muscular even though they do excessive cardio? Oh, good question. Okay, muscular so, or lean? Well, they also kind of, they got some decent mm. muscle on their bodies compared to the average person. I'm going to admit that. But here's, what, here's the thing that people need to stop doing. Stop looking at the pinnacle of physical performance and then using that as proof or evidence of a particular training methodology. Because here's what you're going to find when you look at the top, top level of any sport, whether it be endurance or strength or whatever, they all have exceptional genetics, exceptional genetics. So if you took the average person and you got them to train like an Ironman athlete, they would not look like the top-level well, okay, Ironman okay. athletes. Okay, I, I decided, because I, I don't even know where this person is coming from at all, so I, I decided to put Ironman athlete in Google and look at the images, and I'm scrolling down right now, and I don't see anybody muscular. For, here's what you need to understand, is that we all have muscle. Even if you don't train your muscles, you have muscle. And if you get really, really lean, you see more of that muscle. So the the perception of them being muscular is that they're super lean. That's is true. More than anything else, you don't see any buff Ironmen. No, or they're women. ripped. They're but not. but they're lean. They're lean. Not, it's not an advantage. Yeah. For yeah. Look at look at all those buttons. Show me who who in there muscles. would you define as muscular? Well, Doug, look up the. I would say look lean up, at best. Look yeah. up. And world. by the way, if you're an, I'm not. This is not me shitting on any by any means. It's me. Trying to clarify someone uh, misconstruing what a muscular, the definition of what muscular is that right. I would not define that as muscular well, at all. Well, Doug, look up uh, world uh, top ranked uh, Ironman athletes um, so we could get at least that. Because here's, here's the thing that, again, I want to make this case here. 
at the highest levels of competition, people have incredible ability, incredible genetics to preserve look, look muscle, it. even if they're trying to take it off their you, body. Okay, we're scrolling right now. We've seen already 30. I haven't yeah. seen one muscular person. No, I, yeah, I got to agree. Yeah. <laughs> There's show. No, I mean, the, some some have like some lean, like defined arms. Yeah. But again, that's look a, at, a, we, a we, Okay, now we, we have 40 people, 50 people. How many more top ranked Iron Men and women do you need to see before it, it's a terrible yeah. definition they, but, of them? But to, to be fair, they look different than uh, the top the endurance marathon, runners. Yeah. You know, Endurance because they runners. do they do incorporate more of the body. Because they're cycling and they're swimming. Yes, but yeah, uh, so they build a little bit more muscle. But I'm going to make this fast twitch movement. But again, I'm going to make this argument. You take the average person, you have them trained just like a top level Ironman athlete. They probably won't look like that, because when you're at that level, you have the genetic ability to preserve muscle even when you try and take it off your body. Sure, sure. So yes, they're not jacked, but they have more muscle than. I mean, the I get your would. point, and you're right. Like yeah. your 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 point is it's it's terrible. I mean, it's just like a bodybuilding. Like you should not look at bodybuilders no. and compare. Well, they only do they train this way or do this. It's like, dude, they're all uh, you're an anomaly. If you right. are the uh, if you are on they the started Olympia with the stage, frame to build on. Yeah, you, you know, know, regardless if Annapol, all that bullshit. Like that, it takes a, a certain genetics to get to that level. So I get your point where yeah. you're going. I'm just saying that this, to me, this highlights more what we've shared before about being lean is I remember, okay, my whole career trying to get bigger and never being on a diet and cutting because I I didn't I never had a problem with being kind of leaner. I always couldn't get bigger. Yeah. And the first time I decided to get lean, I got more gear look huge and big compliments than I ever had in my life. And that's just because you can see my muscle more. Okay. And so it's, I didn't get, I didn't add any more muscle. You just leaner. Yeah. Here, here's a better comparison. If you want to compare two similar sports, one more aerobic and in endurance based. Yeah, sprinters one more, versus. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Do a sprinter versus an endurance. They are buff. Yeah. Look at the difference. Yeah, for sure, they're buff. You look at a sprinter. Look at a long distance runner, and there's a dramatic difference. Huge. In how their bodies look. Yes. Yeah, sprinters are buff as shit. Yes. And yeah. that's because they're not running for longer than about thirty seconds. Yeah. It's the same thing with those cycle uh, uh, races where they sprint through and do yeah. those. Oh, yeah. bro. There's Dude, their one, legs are huge. There's just one athlete. I don't know his name. His legs look ridiculous. Yeah. It doesn't even make... It looks like a... Looks like Quadzilla. A, it's insane looking. Yeah. But, you know, okay. So this is the example I like to give to people because trying to explain the range of genetic, you know, variance there is for muscle building, it feels a bit abstract because you can't necessarily see it like just with people walking around. I mean, you can see it, but it's not as easy to see as like height is right it's easy to see with height and if you think about the amount of times you've seen anybody in real life i'm talking about everyday life going to the grocery store going to the store you know going to work think of all the times in your life you've ever seen anyone that was over seven feet tall it, you either a never in your life unless you went to an nba game or mm -hmm. b once and you remember it i literally one time in my life yeah. saw someone <laughs> aside from watching a pro game right Saw a guy over seven feet. I was at the airport, and I remember looking and going, "That's a giant." That yeah, yeah. looks crazy. And he was probably an NBA player. B.J. Maybe. Armstrong <laughs> yeah. and Bill Cartwright came into my restaurant, and it was just like, it was like a giant. Yes. just like entered the building. And that's one end of the extreme with height, right? On the other end of the extreme, right, are people with you know dwarfism, and then everybody else is most people are somewhere in the middle. That's what it's like for muscle building. Those giants that are so rare, you never see them in real life. That's how rare it is to have the muscle building genetics that produce the freaks that you see that you go, I don't want to look like that. If I, you know, if I lift weights, I'm going to end up looking like that. No, you won't. You're not uh, because you, the odds are you don't have that one in a billion. Yeah. You know, type I of just genetics. think that this highlights more that perception of, of what lean is. That's what I think. I yeah. think people, and, and, and that just shows you that's what's great about getting really lean. If you've never leaned out and got to single digit body fat like right. you will look more muscular so if you're it turns heads you yeah know? so if you're somebody who's watching and listening and you've you're always trying to bulk because you already feel like because i wish someone would have told me that like sooner because i spent 10 years on a bulk you know thinking that i need to get bigger 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 the minute i decided to lean out and just get really shredded all of a sudden everybody thought i got bigger i remember a, a, uh like one of my ex-girlfriends telling me that like you're better off being skinny with abs than being big with no abs and was so pissed off about that because i just want to be big and I don't care. Yeah. Never, I just want to be big. never subscribe. Big to that. That. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> Pure lies. Next question is from Danny Bartelt. What is the best way to even out the quads? Oh. Bulgarian split squats. Yeah. Any unilateral exercise, yes. train one side at a time and allow the weaker side to dictate the reps and the weight that you use on the stronger side. And you know, I'm going to take this even further. 
most people do not go through a two or four month training block where everything they do is unilateral. One of the best ways to improve your aesthetics is to develop tremendous symmetry. And in studies support this, by the way, studies will show that people who are considered beautiful typically have incredible facial symmetry. And this is true for the body as well. The left to right symmetry and of course balance between upper and lower body. Training one side at a time, doing unilateral leg exercises, unilateral arm exercises, really does develop kind of this, this side to side symmetry and balance. And then when you go back to your double arm, double leg exercises, you do notice a profound effect on your stabilization and just how you feel, how solid you feel with those lifts. And it tends to break you past, you know, plateau. I think you can make the case also for uh, injury prevention. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, I think that as a trainer, I remember seeing a, a lot of that. If you had some major discrepancy from left to right, um, that's you a lot of times had chronic pain. You, mm -hmm. you have this chronic pain on the on that weaker side uh, because your body is not working together. It's uh, overcompensating on one side more than the other, which causes uh, chronic pain a lot and of times. And it usually starts out like nice and subtle. I know right. for, for me, for instance, uh, just being stuck in traffic more often and having my foot on the pedal and then you know externally rotating uh, my foot and and that just like over time just um, you know continuously doing that same repetitive movement um, goes up the kinetic chain. I start to feel it in my knee. I start mm -hmm. to feel it up into the hip. Uh, and so to be able to address those individually uh, to make sure that that everything is stabilizing properly and then everything's in better alignment that way, like unilateral training is so crucial yeah. to that. I'll give you a machine that's great for this. Adam was big on this when we leg first press. started. Yeah, single, single leg, leg, leg press. press. I love that for this. That's a great you, I'm exercise. I'm glad you brought it up for that. It's like I, I actually, you know that I never leg press bilateral. Once I once mm -hmm. I like introduced or started training unilateral Same. more often, and I started to leg press, like, because here's the way I looked at it was m most pretty strong people can leg press, it, you know, it's, seven, it's eight, not ten, impressive. Yeah, Let's I, just go ahead I don't even know there. how many plates I got up to. I definitely could fill the whole thing up, right? To yeah. leg pressing, which uh, you know, as a kid, at the, when getting to that point, I thought it was so cool, but it's just not practical. I could do half the weight with one leg and get even a better workout because I'm doing single leg. Mm -hmm. And I can keep the, my legs balanced by starting with my less dominant leg, let it dictate the reps that I do for that X amount of weight. And then I also save a ton of time of unracking all that weight because mm -hmm. yeah. unracking, you know, 20 plates off the leg press machine oh. just to look cool. This is, is where ridiculous. you get like all these guys like jumping on top of it. And, yeah. and uh, you know, it's like this Go do one leg. Flex, Go do know, one leg. Gym. And yeah. you'll be like, and that was like a, a goal for me was to get, one leg at least caught up to half of what I could do with both. And you'll be surprised for someone who never trains this way. You might be able to leg press 10 plates, but I bet you can't do five. That's a good with point. One leg. That's a really good point. Yep. You, I think people might assume that because they're using one side, they can do half. Yeah. That's almost never the case. Mm -hmm. So if you could bench press 200 pounds, you probably can't do 100 pounds with just one hand. Now, if you get to the point That's where you can do goal. that, yes, then you go lift with two arms. You feel so solid and connected and so stable. I noticed this with single leg deadlifts. I did them for a while and then went to a traditional deadlift and it was like the bar felt, well, I mean, it felt so different. And learning how to just anchor. So if it's anchoring your hips, so they're still straight ahead, you yeah. know, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of core strength and stability. Uh, same with, yeah, if you're doing that hundred pound dumbbell uh, and trying to, to bench press that up, like just to be able to maintain, you know, a rigid structure in your body is so massively beneficial once you go back to bilateral training. Next question is from T. Cirque. How long to stick to a program? So, well, it depends on the program. If they, if they broke up, if they have phasing. And yeah, stuff I was just going to say, what you want to think about is this, is that you have your big program goal, but then within your program, you should have changes to the workout to keep moving you in that particular direction. So, for example, MAPS Anabolic, right? This is our foundational workout program. The main goal of MAPS Anabolic is strength, muscle, and then for those people who want fat loss, metabolism boosting. And it's a very effective program for that. But when you break the program down, you have three phases. And if you count pre-phase, you have four phases. And each phase is pretty different. The different rep ranges, different tempo, different rest periods, even different combinations of exercises. Now, each one of those phases, though, works towards that ultimate goal. Now, that all being said, your big ultimate goal 
you probably ideally, and this depends. If I'm talking to an athlete, it's going to be much longer. Like if you're a power lifter, then most of the time you're training, it's to get better at power lifting. But if your main goal is overall fitness, overall muscle building and fat loss and health, I think you should change the big goal probably every three, four months is what I would say, where you go from like max muscle building to athletic performance and functionality to sculpting the body to correctional exercise. I think that's the kind of a general but good advice, right? About three, four months. Yeah. No, this question also highlights too um, how and why we priced our programs the way we did. So I remember when we first were, you know, looking at on you know, looking in the space as far as like what is the average uh online digital online program sell for low end high end and you know what where what does it look like the average program online you can find programs all day for like 27 to 59 dollars like give a or 30 give, day uh, yeah but they're they're all ones. like a single phase yeah. you know and that and you should be done with that after you shouldn't repeat that program over and over where when we wrote the maps programs we wrote them with the intent you could potentially follow it over and over so yes. it, it was not something that you had to do and move on from that you technically could do maps anabolic two three four times in a row because the way we phase you in and out now i do think there's tremendous value in what you said is yeah after like three or four months it's actually really good to even move on to another goal but you technically could stay in that that with that goal and actually continue, especially for a beginner who's really just starting to start their their journey. You could run anabolic two three times in a row because of the way we built in the phasing, which is also why we price it higher because it's almost like three individual programs built into one. Exactly, but right. ideally, right? Um, just use our programs as an example. Ideally, you would go like maps anabolic to maps performance to maps aesthetic, which is about. Nine months, right? That gives you nine months of kind of workout programming. And then, like you said, Adam, within each program, there are individual phases, which technically, you're right, could totally be considered yeah. workouts. Well, then, themselves. too, like uh, there, there's other uh, factors, you know, that go into play with that in terms of like when the joints inevitably start talking to you okay you're staying in the same plane a bit too long you're 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 doing barbell training specifically exclusively a bit too long um and, and all these things that aren't like you know coming back to, to to reinforce the integrity of of the joints and and really even like address that at all and so th this is why we we do recommend like you know anabolic to performance then it's aesthetic too that's there's rhyme and reason behind the whole thing but um i, I think that um if you're just like trying to figure all this out on your own, it's quite a lot to consider. Like, how are you going to weave that into your programming uh, and really account for that so you can still progress? Like, we want to make sure you're still progressing and you're not going to hit that wall or hit a place where, you know, your, your shoulder is going to give out at you at some point because, you know, you've just been overwhelming it uh, with a lot of stress. That's such a good point. And I know I just said that you could technically run anabolic, one of those programs, two, three, four times in a row. But what happens to most most people, if you do that, is exactly what you, start you just said. You start to stress the, the yeah, the, be, because anabolic is is heavily dominated by bilateral movements and in the sagittal plane, almost everything in there. Right. And in doing that, you really limit uh, what the body is capable of doing. And we, when we wrote performance, that was why it was because this is a good time to address this because I got a question recently uh, in one of my uh, stories about why performance, what was the logic behind performance after? Well, that's exactly the logic. We, we looked at it as if someone's training in just the sagittal plane bilaterally in uh, almost all their exercises for three months consistently, even if they're progressing beautifully and could technically do that again and continue to see muscle building and fat loss goals, we think for overall optimization for like joint health and overall health, it would be very wise to do some unilateral stuff, multi-plane stuff, do mobility work to complement that work before you move on to another totally. phase so to that point yes you could run our programs like that, but we thought about all of that when we wrote the order of it and there is more to it than just oh okay you should train like a strong person oh you should train like a mobile person oh you should train like a aesthetic person it's not just that basic there we took into consideration uh, all the, the common things that you would see arise from training in one of those programs because yeah, inevitably what do you see you see uh like like elbow sleeves, knee sleeves, like you see yeah. like wrist wraps, like, yep. you know, all that stuff starts to kind of come into uh, the sessions because just the inevitable happens where it just, it's, it's repetitive stress on the joints that just uh, adds up. Next question is from Rui Marquez Insta. Is HMB worth it? HMB. You guys remember that supplement 
got uh, all crazy and it was like all over the ads and stuff. Yeah, this was actually not one that I really got into. Really? So, yeah. okay, so hydroxymethylbutyrate, uh, you could call it, right? That's the that's what HMB stands for. It's a metabolite, an active metabolite of leucine, the amino acid that is really closely tied to the anabolic effects of protein. So the more leucine protein has, the more anabolic it has. Now, I will say this. If your protein intake's high, it doesn't matter. Uh, as much. It's if your protein intake is below that, you know, what studies will show to be the upper limit of where you'll get benefit from high protein. Now, I remember when HMB was first came out, it was EAS that was really pushing it. EAS at the time also sold creatine. Now, creatine is just, it's the best natural supplement, just hands down that you can find. It's, it's good for you. It works. It builds muscle, improves recovery. It's got heart health benefits and cognitive benefits. And it's just a great supplement all the way around. And EAS tried to kind of follow on the heels of creatine with HMB. And I remember reading an article, and this will haunt, I think it'll haunt Bill Phillips uh, till, till forever. Literally, the article said, creatine is like D-ball and HMB is like DECA. Like he was trying to say, you'll get yeah. explosive gains with, with creatine and yeah. you'll get slow and consistent gains with HMB. I, and, and by the way, studies show HMB to be great for presenting, for, excuse me, preventing muscle breakdown in certain populations. It helps with muscle building and strength. So there are studies to show and support it. In fact, you know those insure like drinks that they give yeah, to yeah. old people or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They now will have HMB in them to help with old people to prevent muscle loss. Now, I've tried HMB at least 100 times because of the studies. And I've taken monster doses of it to make it work or whatever. It does, here's why it doesn't do shit. Because my protein intake's high. It, it didn't do anything for me when I would supplement it because it didn't do much. The value with HMB might be the similar value you'd find with branched amino acids, which is if your protein is low, then you may get some benefit from taking HMB. Let's say you're vegan and you're not hitting your you know, 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight because it's harder to do with, with you know, plant sources. HMB might be beneficial to you. Other than that, it's just it's it's one of those supplements that didn't even come close to to meeting the hype. Have either of you heard uh, Lane speak on this before? He, I'm, he's someone who I'd love to hear talk about he, HMB. He says leucine, mm -hmm. just do leucine because leucine has been shown to do the same. thing. Yeah, I, which is I true. know that's his, that his thesis was on that, so I imagine that he would have a really intelligent answer. to If you the, compare leucine to HMB in similar studies, you find that it doesn't make a difference, except for HMB is way more expensive. HMB is <laughs> a much more expensive. A supplement. I can see benefit in some populations. Like I said, low protein. Yeah, but the, even then, why that? Why not just take leucine then? Uh, you, exactly. Why not just give them leucine? So or it's, it's, so it's really worthless because even it, even where it has some value, there's a product that's cheaper and would do as good of a job, if not better. Yeah. The, so the, I, that, to me, that's enough to the just cancel. The one time it. I saw some benefit, I was taking. I don't remember the dose. I was like three grams three times a day, which is way higher than you're supposed to. So I'm not advocating for this. I do like to experiment on myself uh, with supplements. And it was during a period where I was cutting really aggressively and my protein intake even wasn't high enough because my calories were so low. And then I felt like I got a little bit of a, of a benefit, but it never, it never added up to the cost of buying all this freaking HMB that I took. Mm. So it's, it's one of those supplements that I just say, you know, you probably, look, here's the deal. If your protein intake's low and you want to take amino acids to help preserve your muscle, buy branched chain amino acids. Way cheaper. They're high in leucine, right? One of the branched chain amino acids is leucine. Typically, a good branched chain amino acid supplement will have like a 2 1 1 ratio. So, you know, the highest uh, amino acid is leucine, then isoleucine and valine. So, 2 1 1. Uh, and that'll do what the HMB is going to do, and it's much cheaper. Or your better option is increase your protein intake. Take a protein powder, which gives you all the amino acids. And has all the benefits of uh, of preserving muscle, but yeah, this is one of those supplements that it was the marketing was so heavy behind it in the '90s and the early 2000s. Like they spent so much money marketing it, mm. and it absolutely never lived up. Like uh, I've heard of, of it, but also I I got it confused. What's the other one called? That's like a muscle relaxer. It's like a drug. Uh, H it's something like that. It has it sounds like HMB, but. Uh, you guys, I like come on, you guys! I like you're the drug guys. Yeah, yeah, and, it, and, and it's, <laughs> it's supposed to be like a muscle relaxer. Yeah, I don't know. 
I have no uh, idea. Well, I, is it a prescription drug or is it like an no, actual No, no, it's illegal, I think. Yeah. It's legal? Illegal. Oh, illegal. Oh, it's illegal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> Everybody's looking at Adam. Adam, what are the illegal drugs for life? <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> shit. I'll <laughs> never know. Yeah, uh, wasn't I mean, there how one? do you measure it? In grams and ounces Hold or on a pounds? <laughs> wasn't yeah. there a... Okay, I can't, now, I, now I can't remember it. Wasn't there a drug that used to be sold... Yeah, I know this for a fact. I just don't remember the name. It used to be sold <sighs> gonna bother in me. supplement stores because it raised growth hormone, and then uh -huh. people would take it before going to bed, yeah. and it would help them sleep. Methoxy, yes. Methoxybolic? No, 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 no. It's not... Bro, if people it, it used to take it to like party. That. Yes. Oh, to party. Yes. Oh, you're talking about... Um, <laughs> Uh, here we go. I got so I have some of that somewhere. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah. No, so, yeah. bro. Allegedly, I, you're bro. Talking, uh, GH. H, uh, no, not GH. That's growth hormone. That's the sh no, no, no. It's called. It's called. Uh, it's called. It's the acronym is still oh, GH. GMB or G GHB. 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 Thank you. That's what it is. GHB. There it is. That's what I'm seeing in my, my crazy yeah, brain. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. Yeah. So, no, look at actually. The give me the, the chemical. HMB, that, I, I, I remember. Uh, God, I remember my first dude. experience trying that stuff, dude. So it was G like, that's stuff's gnarly. <laughs> it's, so, it is. A, it's like a, not a, at all like HMB. Yeah, no, totally not different. at all. Yeah, 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 yeah it's just, totally different. No, G. Okay, so G. So that's supposed to help you get into your your REM sleep. Yeah, your REM sleep faster. Like you instantly go into. I knew bodybuilders were. And I remember my first experience. I'll never forget the first. Please don't take don't. Don't do it. Yeah, we're, we're not wrecked just because I'm telling no. somebody a drug story. Gamma hydroxybutyrate. There you go. Yeah, yeah. GHB, right? Mm -hmm. So what I mean, what okay, that's the what it what exactly is it uh derived from and like what is it used for? Is it used for anything right now? But like like the practice I know what it is on the black market used for, but what is it used oh, for? Yeah. I heard so, it was like used for like cleaning computers and shit. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, a central nervous system depressant that is common commonly referred to as a club drug. Or date rape yeah. drug. Yep. Oh, yeah. But bodybuilders would use it to get into Yikes. their their REM sleep as fast as you could. And I remember the first time that I I tried this, I was at my house. I remember I was scared to death to try it, and I had a buddy that was peer pressuring me to do it. And I'm easily peer pressured to try drugs, and so I go, okay, I'll try this out because it's just me and you, and it's safe, right? So I take it. Oh no, it was a date yeah. rape drug, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he pressured yeah, you. Yes, yeah. yeah. I'm sure we used to be. Hey, we used to be friends. No, <laughs> so. He, he, Where's what, my pants? What happened was uh, I passed out on the couch afterwards. I just fell asleep. And he came back. He went to the bathroom or something. We were watching TV. It was late at night. And he went to the bathroom. He comes back. And him coming back into the living room startled me enough to wake up. And I woke up. And I thought I slept through the whole night. Like I thought I was, uh, I went, oh my God. And I just felt so rested. And it felt, it literally felt like a full night's sleep. And I thought it was like early in the morning, like five or six in the morning. And it had only been like 20 minutes. And he's like, I was like, how long have you been gone for? He's like, I just went to the bathroom. I came back. And I'm like, what? Yeah, That's yeah. what it felt like. It was Bro, the they used to ever. sell this at supplement stores in the 90s, I believe the early 90s, and it would, because it raised growth hormone and they sold it as something to help you sleep. By the way, this will kill you. Yes. You take very, too much. Very, very uh, dangerous. You very take dangerous. too much, you go to sleep, you don't wake yeah, up. Yeah. And it was, I mean, I was, the, I experimented with like a, a little tiny cap full. Yeah. So small. Yeah. And then people are like, oh, this is fun to take at the club because you feel like you're drunk. That's what I heard. It, it's kind of fun. You know, al it's no alcohol. And my then, friend told me. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, no, I've never used it before. But anyway, it's, that's crazy. Crazy to sell it as a supplement, and now it's one of these, you know, whatever. But it's not HMB, not even close. <laughs> yeah, Justin, don't little, try. A little sidetrack there. Yeah, don't yeah. try. Bring it home. Look, if you like Mind Pump's information, especially our fitness information, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> head over to mindpumpfree.com. Mindpumpfree.com has all of our free guides that can help you build muscle or burn body fat or improve your fitness. Also, you can find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.